Hey audio storytellers, it's been a really busy September and part of what I've been up to is helping to judge the Signal Awards and for that I listen to over 50 podcasts and trailers in less than one week and I thought I knew a little bit about podcasts already but listening to so many shows back to back in such a short period of time really helped me realize some important things that I want to pass on to all of you who are working on your own shows and who want to make your own award-winning quality podcast. So first of all, you could say, well, hey, Nate, it's like not fair. Like not everybody is listening to 50 podcasts in one week and brutally comparing them in this like gladiatorial environment. But I would say on a subconscious level, all of us are approaching our podcast listening with some of these same questions. We are waiting for a new show to prove itself. We are asking ourselves, hey, is the sound quality good? Or is the recording echoey? Are they taking care with the editing? How are they using music? All of these things communicate to us really quickly whether a show is good or not. And so anyway, I want to articulate a few of the big observations I had after listening to, again, over 50 shows in over one week. Uh, number one, when a host is enjoying themselves, they always make the listening experience more enjoyable. Because podcasting is such an intimate medium when you can hear the host smiling, maybe even having a chuckle it really deepens that connection. So many of the podcast narrators I heard opted for, you know, kind of a neutral sort of journalistic tone. That's fine, but life is too short for me to hear your casual interest project. I want to hear your passion project. So when you are recording your narration, give yourself permission to smile, have a little fun with it, and that'll come through. Um, observation number two, there really is a show about everything. Um, I mean, there were, I heard historical fiction shows, a ton of true crime shows, a show where the co-hosts were discussing the cultural impact of their favorite Oprah episodes, and God help us, a show where three guys are sitting around doing hour and a half plus reviews of every single movie on Disney+. Plus. So don't ever tell me I can't find a podcast about that thing I'm interested in, because you can. But the next point, number three, is in such a vast ocean of podcasting options, only the best stuff really rises to the top. And so again, after listening to over 50 shows in such a short period of time, there are just a short handful that stuck with me. One of those was, there's a poem in that, where a guy writes poems based on listener voice memos and then details the creative process in the episode and then finishes by reading the poem live to the recipient. Um, that was a beautiful show. Uh, there's another one called Slumox Gold, which was a historical true crime uh, kind of adventure series very tastefully narrated, effective sound design, really careful writing. That one stuck with me, scored it very high. Uh, the third one was Meditation Stories, which was a mix of meditation cues, peaceful ambient music, and really artfully written personal essays by notable writers. And uh, the fourth one was called The Slowdown, where um, a poet combines personal reflections. Um, the host is named Major Jackson, does a beautiful job, and then also reads a poem. Um, but that was, that was the four I remembered out of the 50 without looking at my notes. So the quality really matters. Um, another, uh, another note, just looking back at my notes here, great writing and editing and sound design stand out in any environment. So I listen to these shows, you know, here in our home office, um, on a like a proper stereo with my real speakers. I listened with my laptop and my 
you know, my nice headphones. I listened in our minivan. I listened in our little car. I listened walking down the street with earbuds. And obviously, the experience is more immersive when you are in a good listening environment and you pick up on the subtleties. But one of those top shows that I scored the highest was one of the ones that I listened to walking down a busy street running an errand on my earbuds because that difference still comes through. So again, this is a reminder that that care that you take in recording, in writing, in narrating, in editing, in sound design, people pick up on it. Um, the Another um, big observation that I had after hearing a number of different interview shows was that average and sort of inexperienced interviewers start with kind of a boring question like, so tell me a little bit about yourself or so how did you get into podcasting? And those just don't really get you anywhere. Most, most people are just not that articulate telling their whole autobiography off the cuff. But the really great interviewers do their homework, they look up the person's work, and then they ask a really pointed question like, hey, so-and-so, you just compared AI right now to spring break in Fort Lauderdale. Tell us what you mean by that. And of course, we're instantly drawn in. We're like, whoa, okay, what is that about? And you are also, you're instantly doing two things. You are getting the person to talk about their area of expertise, so they're more likely to give you a compelling and intriguing answer. And also, you're kind of creating a sense of conflict by immediately posing a provocative question. So if you're doing an interview show, I highly recommend that you start out that way. And you can always do a little intro chit-chat with your interviewee when you're talking live, but then you just cut that part out. And then you start with a powerful question. You immediately bring people in. Um, this is a little bit of a reiteration of a, of a previous point, but the care that you take in all the steps of creating a great podcast. Again, script writing, script editing, recording, uh, narration, audio editing, sound design, all that stuff, that shows a respect for your listener's time. And I found some of the celebrity podcasts were the opposite extreme, where they're just kind of counting on us to listen because they're famous and just a whole bunch of like rambling and throat clearing and miscellaneous chit chat and shooting the breeze. And I found myself thinking like, hey, just because you're famous, like I got a life to live. Like, tell me something that matters. So again, quality comes through and it conveys a respect to your listeners who have hundreds of thousands of other choices. Um, final, final note, uh, all of these top shows that I scored the highest out of these 50 were created by teams. You know, some of them were people from a writing background who brought in an audio editor or a sound designer or a producer. Some of them were, you know, uh, teams of half a dozen folks. Um, one of them was from like a, a medium sized studio, but you don't have to be a big studio to make a great show. But what this told me was the power of collaboration and how the work will always get better when you have different people with complementary skills coming together. So if you are a solo podcaster right now, even just find a feedback partner, read your rough episodes uh, as a voice memo on your phone, email that to a friend, or use Voxer, record a rough cut, send it to a friend or a trusted feedback partner, and the work will get better. So finally, you're like, all right, great talk, Nate, uh, but how do I make an award-winning level podcast? And so, of course, we have a couple ways to do that. Uh, the first is our workshops, which boil down narrative foundations into three different two-hour sessions. We, we do private coaching, and of course, the most in-depth option is our online course, 
which is 16 comprehensive modules from idea to launch, which also includes the workshops and the private coaching. So we hope to see you in one of those soon and can't wait to hear your stories.